Hello, my name is Carl. This is my Craftex brand, heavy duty 18 by 47 inch wood lathe. And this is one of three videos describing attachments that I've made for this lathe. Um, there are a number of clones of this lathe around the world, at least half a dozen that I've found, with different brands, uh, different paint, but come out of the same factory, Zhodong, China. Things that I like about it, the mass, 250 kilograms, 550 pounds of weight. Uh, standard, one, in, one inch by eight thread per inch spindle, number two Morse taper on the headstock and the tailstock, standard for a wide variety of, of attachments. Speeds, variable speed. Just dial in the speed. Two speed ranges with different belt settings, about a one to three reduction ratio. And then there's about a one to one ratio with a larger motor pulley and a smaller spindle pulley. Easily release the tension and change the, the, the belts from one to the other. There. I've, I've owned the lathe for about eight years. I bought it for about 950 US dollars eight years ago, and it's served me very well. I've had no failures whatsoever with it. Um, dislikes. The, the headstock doesn't swivel for onboard turning. You can, in fact, slide the headstock right down to the far end of the tailstock and turn off the far end. You can unlock the head stock with a cam operated lock and it locks in, in any position on the on the bed. There's also a camera operated lock, same idea for the tail stock. Quickly move it. The other thing that I didn't care for is there's a fine thread in the tail stock. It takes a lot of turns to advance and retract the uh, tail stock. I'd like to see a good acne screw thread. Now, I'm a little bit worried that the fine thread in here, even though it's inconvenient, is also going to wear out a little faster than a good acne screw thread would. I don't care for this rather bulky headstock. I'd like to see a little bit slimmer headstock. It gets in the road of small spindle turning at the, at the end of the spindle near the headstock. Could be a little bit more compact. Back to my likes. There's a 6-inch faceplate came with the lathe, and it has a couple of hex head screws that lock it onto the spindle. The screws go in here inside of the threaded area of the spindle to lock the faceplate so it won't unscrew when operating in reverse. And the spindle does have a, a reverse switch right here to, to, to run the spindle in reverse. What I disliked was the, the uh, local Craftex dealer was unable to order this faceplate, duplicates of this faceplate for me. What he made available was a cheap, generic cast faceplate with a 1x8 thread that would fit any lathe and no locking screws to hold it on against unscrewing in reverse. No hand wheel. I did make a hand wheel. I found that there are two tapped holes on the end of the driven pulley here, the two steps. Left room for the um, motor to move up to, to slack the belt for changing from the, the high torque to the high speed or vice versa. Another mystery with this lathe is to me is the indexing holes. There are four holes here, three tapped, 
one is not tapped and my manual says that there are 12 holes in the spindle and three holes in the in the headstock casting my manual for the relay says that the three holes are 20 degrees apart and i don't i can't quite figure that out but the the spindle lock has one end it just slightly slides into lock this middle for unscrewing face plates. The other end is tapped and slightly tapered so to lock the spindle for at an indexed position for fluting or other index work. I'm going to make a hub here 36 centimeters in circumference that I can paint white and number from 1 to 36 corresponding to the indexing holes. Oh, I've glued up some hardwood blocks that I can use for the hub of this hand wheel and some walnut segmented pieces that I can glue on and turn for a new hand wheel. I've turned the hardwood glue up into a cylinder 114.7 millimeters in diameter using pi that should give me a circumference of uh, 36 centimeters. I've made up a, a, a drawing to work from showing the diameter 114.7 and showing a, a recess to align by slipping over the hub of the driven pulley in the top of the headstock. And then there's two holes for attaching bolts and the hardwood ring for the hand grips. So with, with the diameter 114.7, I should come up with a circumference of exactly 36 centimeters. On the inner end of the hub, I've turned a one centimeter deep recess for the driven pulley hub in the headstock and I've also machined about a two millimeter deep recess for the spindle shaft. I've been checking to see that do a little bit of trial there to make sure it fits snug, snugly. Then we have to drill a through hole for the uh, tool, the spur center ejection push rod using a 3 8 bit. I've mounted the walnut grip ring in my Longworth chuck and I'm turning a 75 millimeter bore on the inside diameter. Uh, I'm not going to explain how to make a Longworth chuck. There's lots of good YouTube videos on making, uh, making this Longworth chuck. I have a couple. I have this smaller one and I have a larger one. Especially for finishing off the underside of bowls. This chuck was made for me by made for me by my good friend in Arkansas, Benny Floyd, and I'm going to put a link to a video that describes uh, that interviews him uh, and describes a little bit about his skills as as a bird call maker. And I'm leaving a ledge or a protrusion here to line up with the inside diameter of the hand, the hand wheel or the grip wheel, as 75 millimeters. Drill a couple of holes in the hub to line up with the tapped holes in the driven pulley. We need to counter bore for the heads of the caps, the attached cap screws. So I'm using a, a 5 8 bit and uh, depth stop set that comes within 35 millimeters of the table surface.
I glued and clamped the walnut ring to the hub and the glue has been setting overnight and now comes the fun part turning the uh, walnut ring into a nice toroidal ring Okay, a little sanding, and we're done. I've made a small pointer, and I'm going to start marking this hub at each of the 12 locking positions on the spindle. And I'll end up with 12 equally spaced marks all around the hub. Each of these marks should be three centimeters apart. And I'm going to take my tape and mark off each, each centimeter or each 10 degrees between the marks that I made previously. And I should end up with 36 marks each 10 degrees apart all the way around the hub. I've got numbers to assign the number of degrees of rotation in 10 degree increments, 0, 10, 20, 30, 90, and so on, all the way around to 360. So let's figure out what's going on with this indexing boss. I've tentatively lettered the holes on the boss on the headstock A, B, C, and D. I'm going to start with the more horizontal hole in the headstock in hole number B. And if I lock the spindle in place, it's at zero. If I back off and reset, the next hole in the shaft is at 30. The next one is at 60. And it continues like that all the way around. So I'm going to make up a chart. The shaft index hole, the hole in the hub of the shaft at 1, with pin in the hole B, 0, 30, 60, and so on degrees. Now let's switch to hole A. It locks the spindle at 10 degrees. If I back it out and advance to the next hole in the shaft, it locks it at 40 degrees. Hole C, that's not threaded, that's the one with the locking pin. And if I go back to the start, hole C locks it in the 20 degree position. back off and go to the next one. It's at 50 degrees. So we have locking positions for 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Let's go to hole D, the threaded hole on the bottom here. See what happens. The first, the first hole on the shaft locks it at 10 degrees. It's hole D, locks it at 10 degrees. exactly the same as the pin inserted in the hole A does. Back out, advance. Next position locks is 40. Again, the same as hole A. There's no reason for hole D whatsoever on the headstock. It just duplicates the setting that hole A has. Lathe as it's equipped, we can stop, lock the spindle at any at 10 degree increments right from 0 to 360. And in fact, I believe that position C here with the locking pin is no good for fluting or decorative work on the lathe because it's, it's too loose. 
I've completed a chart on the degrees of rotation that would be achieved with each of the combinations of settings. I've made up a, a, a bit of a simulator here where this represents the shaft with the 12 holes drilled into it radially 30 degrees apart all the way around and this would represent the boss on the headstock casting with th three threaded holes and one straight push-in hole. If we line up the hole in the shaft with the threaded hole A and then rotate till B aligns, the shaft would rotate 10 degrees. Rotate till hole C aligns, the shaft rotates 20 degrees. And then if we rotate until hole D aligns, we would have rotated 30 degrees, but we'd rotate it back to the point where A realigns. And that's why I say there's no need for a threaded hole D in the, in the casting boss. We're just going to use A and B. And even we can't even use C because it's too loose to hold the headstock shaft rigidly enough. I've made up a chart to show what degrees of rotation you need to stop the spindle at to make a three-sided spindle. We need to stop the headstock at 120 degree intervals. Eight-sided, 45. Ten is 36. And so on. Now looking at my chart, which of these are unavailable with the factory setting? 180? Yes. 120? Yes. 90? 60? Eight-sided, 45 degrees? No. 10-sided, 36 degrees? No. 12-sided with 30 degrees? Yes. 14-sided, 26 degrees? No. 16-sided, 22 and a half degrees? No. 18-sided at 20 degrees? Only using pinhole C. Too loose, I'm going to say no. Now, I've gone around the house to take a look at some of our decorative pieces of furniture just to see what kind of, what number of flutes have been put into the spindles or legs of the pieces of furniture. Well, I can see the most common usage of an indexing wheel is 12 flutes. Um, and of course with 12, I could accomplish that with the factory provided indexing system. Uh, also, some eight sided, I could not achieve that with the factory setting. The four poster bed has 16 flutes, could not achieve that with the factory indexing system. So it follows that I, to, to be totally flexible, I need another way to stop the spindle at 22 and a half degree intervals, 45 degree intervals to really cover the, uh, the feet. I'm going to drill and tap a hole for a headstock locking screw. Simply an all-thread rod with a, a locking knob that I can screw right against the hub of the hand wheel to lock the headstock in any position. I first thought about putting the stop screw on top, but then I thought to preserve the appearance of the lathe, perhaps we could hide it here behind, beside the uh, motor controller. Okay, there's an effective spindle lock. I've just added a, a, 
uh, pell nut here to lessen the chance of it vibrating in and rubbing on the hub when not in use. One last detail, I'm adding some stenciled numbers to indicate the degrees of rotation. I mentioned that I had three videos describing three attachments for this lathe. The first video described retracting casters Casters that I can use to extend and jack up the lathe with a foot pedal at each end. And I published that video several months ago and also offered plans for these retracting casters at that time. Now, I've completed the video on this hand wheel indexing ring and I've prepared plans for it. Three pages of the color photos and description of the steps to make the degree wheel and hand wheel attachment. And this actually replicates what's in the video. And my intention is for you to be able to take this to the shop and use it to refer to as you build the hand wheel, degree wheel assembly. Full size drawing of the segments that you glue up to make the grip ring for the hand wheel. A full size drawing of the hub and grip wheel with all the measurements for the recess, for the gluing on the walnut ring for the grip ring. I've copied, made a copy of the chart that shows what degree settings are available. I've made a copy of my simulator to show the alignment of the holes in the shaft and the holes in the boss on the head, headstock casting. So I'll include that. And I've got a complete list of materials, sizes, cut list, and a list of tools that I used to build the hand wheel degree wheel. So I'm adding that to the plans for the retracting casters and to come shortly is a video describing the steady rest that I made for supporting large objects which are, which are mounted in the chuck on the, on the lathe. I hope you enjoyed this video. If, and I hope that you'll uh, share it with others that you think might be interested, especially if you know somebody who has one of these 18 by 47 lathes in, in any color. Uh, thank you very much for looking at my video. Thanks for subscribing.